Heavy footsteps approach our cell and I am launched back into, pr into the present. We are all holding our breath, willing them to pass, them being the um, guards, when the door is unlocked and swings open. Four guards, including the disabler, appear. They haven't been for three days, so we are expecting them. They come more frequently when something is going on outside that scares the government, then they torture us more. Sometimes they take, us, they take up to 10 of us in a day, one at a time, to different places. Other times they come in with their batons for mass, ba mass bashings. Afterwards, there is no water to wash our wounds, which lie open, bleeding and waiting for infection. We stand still and silent. This time the disabler calls Ali al Janabi. The blood pounds in my head and I want to cry out for my mother, but instead I square my shoulders and, my shoulders and step forward. I think of what they did to Ahmad, my little brother, and fury rises up to fortify me. Flanked by the guards, I am marched down the passageway to the torture room, but then I have to stand outside as if I am waiting at the doctor's office, waiting my turn. I look into the face of the guard whose care I have been left in. He is a few years older than me, with not unkindly face. I want to ask him how he can spend his day administering hideous injuries to his Iraqi brothers, but to remind him of his inhumanity would only inflame. But looking, him, looking at him must have been enough, because he swings his baton and hits me with a blow to the head. It almost knocks me unconscious. As blood begins to run down my face, the door opens and the poor unfortunate who preceded me is carried out. And then I see the electrodes lying on the floor and realize what I am in for. I break out in a sweat with the thought of what they did to my father. I can stand most things they, they can do to my body, but if they fry my brain, I may as well be dead. I struggle, but within, within a moment, my guard has me in a headlock and the other three have returned to drag me in, strip me off my clothes and tie me to a chair. They start on the questions again, but what they really want to do is go on with the with electrocuting me so they can maintain their quota. They attach the electrodes to my back, tongue and genitals and the current surges through my body like fire in my veins and I stiffen and shudder. I have no idea how much time has gone by, but they cooked me until I passed out and now I am waking back in our cell. I am grateful for the familiar surroundings and the sight of Akram sitting beside me as I lie shivering on the floor. My head throbs so violently my vision blurs and a sharp pain pulses through my limbs. The feeling of paralysis is what really scares me, but Akram is reassuring me. Better if you stay asleep, he says, as he spreads my blanket over me. The numbness will go. In a few days, you will be back to normal. Did they get what they wanted from you? I ask, wondering how many times it, how many goes it would take before you go crazy and tell them everything. He clasps and unclasps his hands, and for the first time, I notice Akram has no fingernails. They did, he says after a pause, then goes on haltingly. I stayed out of politics. I taught 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds at a respected school. We talked about many things. I, I was good friends with the other teachers and the children. I loved my job. You don't need to tell me, I say quickly, but he seems to want to go on, perhaps to justify so many nights of soundless crying when his body shook so vigorously that neither of us could sleep. I'm just a normal Muslim, but I wanted to improve my understanding of my faith and to be a better teacher, so I borrowed a book on Islam from the library. One day when I was walking home, the secret police picked me up. I happened to have the book with me, so they took me in and beat me because they thought I must be part of an, some Islamic movement. Saddam had purged the communists. Now he was after the Islamics. When I refused to admit to something so ridiculously false, they brought out their tools of trade and worked on me for so long, I finally confessed. But that wasn't enough. They wanted names of others. They tortured me until I begged them to let me die. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't stop. They waited for me to revive so they could keep on with it. Until I told them all the other teachers in the school were part of an Islamic movement. He pauses, hanging his head and drawing circles on the dirt with his pulpy fingers. So they picked up the 12 other teachers. They tortured them all, then executed six of them. None of them were Islamics. <laughs>